Oh. Sleuth, where are you? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there oh. you are. Oh, oh, oh. You okay? You need your inhaler? No, okay. Give you, give you a second to breathe there. Whoa! I ran all the way back here. Good morning, junior detectives. Hello. Good morning, junior detectives. At home, I ran all the way from police headquarters. I had to help them solve the mystery of the missing case. And that was a mystery huh. uh, about, um, well, you see, there was a, 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 a video that was checked mm. out a long time ago. Yes. And, oh, from um, Blockbuster. Oh, yes, from, from, yes. from a movie store. Yes. And they, they didn't bring it back, and they didn't rewind. Huh. Dun, dun, dun. Huh. So I've heard about Blockbuster, and I've heard about videotapes, but what are they? Well, these things that you p put a movie on, and then you, ah. you put them inside this, like, box thing, and then you... Ah. you wind them around and they have a movie on them and it's just it's too hard to explain okay let's, sounds old anyway let's just yes. move on let's okay. just move on uh, okay um so gregory yes as we've been thinking through this mm. uh, you know this being in a hurry i had mm. today reminds us of what we talked about yesterday that god the father is in a hurry to run to us mm. to restore us to bring us back to himself but mm. he's not frantic like me it's not like Rah! It's, it's yes. very peaceful. Mm. It's very peaceful. And we know that because the last thing that we're talking about this week is this, that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Hmm. He's the Prince of Peace. Hmm. Hmm. So God has peace that we don't have. That's a big clue. God has peace we don't have. Hmm. And... Hmm. Yes. Yes. When we when we don't have peace, we worry about our grades. Yes. We, we worry about getting sick. We we worry if people will like me or not. We will worry if if I will know anybody if I if I go somewhere yes. uh, and there's there's a party or, or something like that. We worry about monsters under our bed. Mm. Or we worry about about eating our broccoli. Yes. Worry about if Murgatroyd is gonna eat too much food. Eat Murgatroyd the Twinkies. Is a puppet. Murgatroyd yes. is a puppet. I worry about you sometimes. Okay. I'm just being honest. I know, I know. <clears throat> All that fear and doubt in our heart makes our brains run and run and run and they won't stop. Mm. And it makes us feel exhausted. Yeah. Woo, I'm, I'm exhausted just hearing you talk about all this. Uh, I, I don't blame you. Yes. Um, well... <sighs> I think we have more evidence today hmm. of the kind of peace we were talking about. There was a man and he had all kinds of doubts and fears and worries swirling and swirling and swirling and swirling and swirling and swirling and swirling, and swirling, and swirling around in his heart. Wow. And his name was Thomas. Mm. And yes. here's the thing. Jesus came back from the dead. This man, Thomas, had been with Jesus for three and a half years years it's a long he time. should have known mm. that jesus was a man of his word that he was mighty god that he was wonderful counselor that he was god with us he should have known all of those things mm. and yet he didn't and he mm. when he hears that jesus comes back from the dead that there's an empty tomb his heart doesn't feel peace he doesn't believe he says until i can put my hand in his side I will not believe. Mm. Jesus gave his disciples peace. And Thomas, when Thomas came in, he showed Thomas that he was alive. Oh, if only we could hear more from the heart of Thomas. Yes, sleuth, sleuth, yes, yeah, sorry. I was back here working on an algorithm. Yes. Actually, for a long time. Uh, I used... Uh, the Bible to reconstruct, if you will, a letter of what Thomas might have felt or thought during this time. Okay? Well, let's hear it. You want to hear it? Yes. Okay, let me, let me take a look here. Ready? I'm going to reenact this letter. Okay, here go we go. Go for it, Gregory. <clears throat> Hello, I am Thomas. I was with Jesus as one of the 12 disciples. Incredible time in my life. I can't even believe to tell you how much I love Jesus. Back then, it seems like I was always the one out of the 12 
that had the most questions. I was the most inquisitive, if you will. You know, I, I just have to know. I just have to figure it out. I have lots of questions. I've always been that way my whole life. But Jesus always met me right where I was. He's a wonderful counselor. Yes, unlike ah. me. And he was gentle and loved me and answered my questions. However, after Jesus died, I, I'll tell you, all of us, not just me, the disciples, we were devastated. Obviously. We, we just didn't understand what happened, you know? Th things just, it was just confusing. My disciple friends were so excited and because they, they wanted to see Jesus. And uh, it was just a tra traumatic time in our lives. Uh, but they said it was true that Jesus had come back alive again from the dead, right? That he was resurrected. They were all the buzz with their story. Jesus is mighty God. Mighty God, that is correct. Mm. Well, I, I had missed that gathering where we saw him. Mm. And, I, and I hate to miss out, you know. I, I, I don't want to miss out on anything. Hmm. Uh, so they insisted that they had seen Jesus. They were excited as they told me. Interesting. Interesting. Yes, yes. You, you want to know what I said? I absolutely want to know what you okay. said. This is what, this is what I think Thomas said. Okay. He says, oh, great. How are you guys? Or thank you for sharing. I don't, he didn't say these things. No. No. Instead, I said, unless I see the hands and feet, hmm. unless I see your side where the nails were put, I will not believe that Jesus is alive. I could tell that they were frustrated with me. Yes. But I tell you, I just have to see. I doubted. I wanted evidence. Yes. I wanted evidence. Hmm. But to be honest, I didn't have peace. Mm. Well, you know, what's interesting about this is that when Thomas comes back, yes. Jesus accepts him back in like the father in the story. Yes. He's showing a part of his heart as the everlasting father. Yes. That's yeah. interesting. It is interesting. And eight days later, we were all in the same place again. And all of a sudden, poof, Jesus was right there in the room. Hmm. Right, right there with us. And he, and he walked over to me, right? And he said words about peace, the very thing I was missing. The very thing that Thomas was missing was peace. God was with them. Yes. With them. With them. And it's exactly. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Interesting. Yes. It is exactly what I needed. Mm. And he said to me, put your finger here. See my hands. Put out your hand mm. and place it in my side where the spear was, was wounded. Do not disbelieve, but instead believe. Mm. Instantly. I believed. Instantly, I cried and fell at Jesus' feet and said these words, my Lord, huh. my God, I wish I could tell you how my heart burned within me. Wish I could let you know that my heart needed to be stirred. Words cannot convey what kind of peace that I was experiencing. That is an incredible story. Yes. He gave Thomas Peace. He gave his disciples peace. Yes. He says, peace I give you. Yes. And then he breathed upon them and gave them the Holy Spirit, yes. who is our counselor. counselor. Yes. And he speaks to their heart and tells them what is true. Mm. This is fantastic. It is. Great, great news. Great evidence. So I have a couple of questions. Yes. Just like Thomas had questions. Uh-huh. Was Jesus frustrated, do you think, with Thomas because he didn't believe? Well, according to the evidence, no, not at all. He told them uh, not to doubt only after he showed Thomas his hands inside. Mm. He was very gentle with Thomas yes. and knew what was in his heart even hmm. more than Thomas did. Interesting. He told Thomas that he needed to believe. Gregory, according to the evidence, did, yes. did Thomas know without a doubt that Jesus loved him completely? Yes. He knew, Jesus knew Thomas's very thoughts. <laughs> Jesus loves people, right? Because that is what he decided to do. Yes. 
And, and that is what he came to earth to do, right? He, he does right. not love us because we are good or nice people. Yes. In fact, <laughs> no one could be good enough to be worthy of God's love. Yes. 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 Now I have some questions for you, junior detectives, and you, junior detectives at home. Was Nicodemus worthy of God's love? Was the rich young ruler worthy of Jesus's love? Was the paralyzed man worthy of Jesus's love? Were the 10 lepers worthy of Jesus's love? Was the prodigal son or his brother worthy of Jesus's love? And now Thomas, was he worthy? No. No. But Jesus, by his sacrifice on the cross, made them worthy. Yes. Ah, absolutely. Oh, there is so much here. This, 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 is there any other biblical evidence that we can look at that yes. will help us understand? Sleuth, there's one more piece of evidence and I'm going to read it and then I'm going to take uh, my dog out, okay, to go to the bathroom, okay? He's, he's a puppet, but okay. Yes, okay. One more piece of evidence that may be helpful. Yes. It says this. In John 20, 29, then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. Huh. Huh. What an amazing truth. Amazing story. I'll, I'll be back, Sleuth, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. I'm going to take Murgatroyd out to go to the party. Hello. I have been Inspector Sleuth all week, but I want to come to you now as Pastor Zach. It's fun to use our imagination. It's fun to pretend. It's fun to think that we have evidence and clues and, and all of this interesting stuff up here. But let me, let me say something to you. The most important thing this week is what do you do with all this? It's been our prayer all week that your heart is stirred by the word of God. And we want you to know as much as we like to, 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 to play make believe up here, we want you to know now and for all of life that God is not make believe. Jesus is not make believe. He's real. Our hope this week is that you've seen that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, that he's wonderful counselor, that he's mighty God, that he's everlasting father and prince of peace, that all these truths from Isaiah 9, 6 are something that your heart will hold on to. If you've already believed in him, that they'll hold you fast. But if you haven't, to know that all it takes is three things. First, you believe what God says about you is true, that you do have a heart that longs for yourself, that you do say you have a selfish and sinful heart, that you agree with God and God's word when he says that. And two, you agree with God's word when he says that Jesus is the son of God and that he came to save sinners, which is us that you repent and you believe that you bow at the feet of Jesus. And three, that you allow the power of that wonderful counselor, that, that counselor that Jesus left with us, the Holy Spirit to truly change your heart. to take you from this heart over here into more and more, not perfectly on this side of heaven, make you more like him and that you'll grow in him all the days, all the days of your life. So I ask you now what we've been praying all week Where's your heart? Is it rooted over here? 
or is it over here in Jesus? It can be over here if it's not already. And it can grow and be filled with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The more that we pray and we trust Jesus to change our heart. Let's do that now. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we've had such a fun week learning about who your son is and how he is a reflection of who you are. Father, our heart is reflected and we see just how far we fall short of your glory. Father, we pray that you will change our hearts. We agree with you that our hearts are sinful. They're rebellious. Father, we ask you to forgive us of that. We believe what you said about Jesus is true, that he is your son and that you sent him to give us his righteousness and that it covers our sin. Father, we're asking you to root us deeply in Jesus so that we will grow, that we will bear fruit and that our hearts will, because of your work in them, show love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Father, we ask you that this week would not pass by with us unchanged, but that your word would change us. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that, if you in deep in your heart know those things, you have solved the mystery of the closed case. We've enjoyed having you this week. We pray that you'll continue to grow in him. Thank you for joining us. We want to thank him for all that he's inserted into your lives this week. And I know that your children can probably already imitate him. And we just thank you so much for taking the time to have VBS with us this year. And we know that God, the living God, has probably done a lot in your hearts to teach you about him and remind you about how glorious and how great he is through Jesus. We are so thankful for our children's ministry team and our volunteers and everyone who really just came together to make this thing happen. We've enjoyed having you this week. We pray that this has been a blessing to you and your family.